Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So I wish I could speak in Turkish. It would be much, much better and much comfortable. But since this is the, the pace to speak in English, so I should speak in English. Otherwise, I am fluent more in Turkish, all right? So, um, I mean, you see, I will just, I will keep this picture. Um, the picture is actually from um, a dersane, a spiritual gathering of the Nur community in the area, actually. It's a walking distance. Uh, so we are grat grateful to Nevzat Yildirim, his courtesy. Um, so, I mean, the whole, my whole argument, my whole um, proposal is that um, that you know the, in practice in practice the nur community regards the gatherings in the darsana as a form of jihad okay this is the 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 project and actually this is also part of my dissertation uh, you know doctoral work uh, and i hope uh, we i will be able to to relate it so just briefly about the context, you know, if you look at um, the Muslim societies, um, their experience of modernity and secularism has been very painful. And in, in most cases, it was not an organic process. You know, if you look at uh, Egypt, if you look at Afghanistan, if you look at Iran, usually it is from top down and people were enforced to follow a form of ideology or form of life. And actually, Turkey is no exception. If you look at, um, you know, in the early years of the republic, uh, you will see uh, almost all institutions uh, that were providing uh, spirituality and Islamic education, they were shut down, right? Remember uh, the Sufi lodges, you know, Tekka and Zawiyas. Remember madrasas. Um, remember actually the law, you know, the Sharia law was dismantled in Turkey. Uh, so, I mean, all of a sudden, you have these institutions, you have the people, scholars, uh, who are providing spirituality and education, now they are gone, right? So then, what people do, what kind of resources and um, uh, form of spirituality they were looking for, how they survived? To, I mean, at the end, Turkey is, um, where you can stay, I mean, just from the whole, you see, it is a very... A religiously vibrant society, but without these institutions. So it is a very interesting case, actually. Um, so then, and there are a few reasons. I mean, why? Uh, I mean, why this this study is relevant? Why it is important? There are several reasons. Um, one of them is, um, you know, if you look at uh, the you know, Muslim society's response to the challenge of secularism and modernity. In most cases, you see, um, uh, you know, political Islam dominates the narrative, uh, that it is a dominant discourse, uh, Islamic movements. And actually, according to a Pew Research Center, this is an America-based research center, uh, to even today, a significant numbers of Muslims, they believe that Islam should play an important role in politics. Um, so it is no surprise, therefore, that Islamic parties have become an important dynamic of uh, politics in many Muslim societies. I mean, they face challenges, but actually, you know, they also receive lots of support. The second reason is, uh, and again today, a uh, majority of Muslims, they believe the Sharia, ah, the Islamic law, should be part of the, the land, that, you know, we should be ruled according to the Sharia. Ah. Um, and it, it seems to them, you know, for, for the vast majority of Muslims, in order to live a life in according with God's will, a Muslim needs to live in a place ruled according to the Sharia. Ah. So in order to be a pious Muslim, you know, to, uh, to follow taqwa, piety, then you need to follow the, uh, you know, you need to be in a place where there is Sharia. Ah. Uh, and actually, for example, there are statistics, again, recent statistics, um, while the support for Sharia among Muslims varies from region to region, in South Asia, for example, the median support is 84%. You know, people, they want to be uh, followed, uh, you know, ruled according to Sharia. But in the new context of Turkey, somehow it seems that uh, Nursi disregards these this positions or these perceptions. Um, uh, for example, um, 
Uh, as you know, there are two major bodies of Sharia, Islamic law. One is Mu'amalat, right, transactions, and the other one is Ibadat, the acts of worship. Uh, and um, this is actually well put by, by Sharif Martin, who recently passed away. He says, he notes, in contrast to Al-Ghazali, Nursi did not dwell much on the areas of Islamic social relations and forms of worship, but studies the areas that would assist Muslims in understanding their religion. So unlike actually Al-Ghazali, for example, and also many Islamic societies who responded in a form of political Islam, Nursi did not focus too much on this two major form of, uh, forms of Sharia, which, uh, which are Mu'amalat and Ibadat, right? So he, he draws a different map. Um, many, so mainly true, both individual and communal readings of the Risala in the Darsanas. So I assume many of you are familiar with Darsanas. Basically, you know, the other usually uh, we see that the madrasas also used. But what we mean actually when in the evenings, usually during the weekends, uh, the readers of the Risala, they come together in a, in a house, basically in a house, and they read uh, uh, Risala you know, the works of Bedou Zaman, uh, collectively, right? But um, we, it, it seems, you know, there is a little bit doubt um, that the Nur community believed the best response to these challenges in the secular context without the institution is through readings. And this is very interesting, and we, we don't see in many parts of the Muslim community. Dealing with issues concerning faith, concerning Iman, became their daily jihad. So basically for the, uh, a reader of the Risala, your daily jihad is to read the Risala. Uh, so again, uh, you know, of course, because of this position, um, I mean, this sometimes regarded as a pacifist, you know, as a pacifist reaction that uh, uh, because of that they, in a way, withdrew themselves from active uh, politics. Uh, it also um, received lots of criticism, uh, even in, within the Muslim community in Turkey. So the third reason, um, we see actually when, when there, is, you know, there is no religious freedom, when there is persecution, when there is oppression in the context of practicing your faith, in some cases, um, the response is uh, you know, to be in conflict with state, if not violence. We see lots of cases, again, in, uh, in the Muslim societies. Violence because, um, and again, uh, although many would read different, you know, the current, let's say, extreme Islamic movements uh, differently, um, but we cannot deny that actually it is also, in a way, a response to uh, secularism or modernity or, or form of state. Among them today, we can mention ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Daesh. Uh, for this group, it is almost unimaginable to live a religious life in a secular environment. For the Nur community, non-violent struggle was unconditional and a conflict and violence were no options. Nursi presents the reading of the Risala in the Dersanes as an effective form of jihad to deal with the new challenges. So this is another. The fourth reason, um, the fourth reason is uh, the problem is not just actually that you know we are, we are in a secular uh, that we don't the Muslims in Turkey they didn't have institutions they didn't have madrasas they didn't have zawiyas, but also because of uh, that it seems that Nursi has foreseen uh, the you know the problems of a secular age not just in Turkey but also around the globe. So basically, in this context, he offers a solution. I mean, in many. Uh, many Western societies, religious institutions are losing ground. They are not, um, they, didn't, they don't have the impact at, uh, as the way they used to have. And in some cases, you see they are completely terminated, like in the context of Turkey. Uh, and still, although the dynamics are changing. Um, so in this context, the Dersanes, you know, the spiritual gatherings of the Risale, uh, uh, as a spiritual resource, might be seen as an important model in forming the fate of Muslim believers in secular Turkey, where the religious institutions were shut down. So basically, how, what is the best way to preserve your faith or Iman? Be before it was through the institutions, Tekka, Zawiyas, Madrasas, but now you don't have it. What do you do? And then the new community's answer is actually the Dersanes. The other reason that this that you know, study on the Dersana is important. 
So now we have, um, you know, various perceptions in the West about Islam, right? One of them is, uh, just to give an example um, uh, from the United States, actually Muslims have the lowest rate among, um, uh, you know, religious communities, religious groups, even lower than atheists. So basically, uh, in America, um, it's, it seems uh, many people would prefer an atheist to a Muslim. Uh, so what does that mean? It's Muslims, they, didn't, they don't have a good image. And one of them is a, one of the reasons actually, uh, you know, they associate Islam with extremism. So the point, my point is actually, or they think that Islam is anti-modern, cannot, is not compatible with secularism or democracy. So the point is actually the gathering of the Risale in order defies these, these perceptions, actually it dismantles these perceptions. And not to mention that actually, uh, you know, the, it is almost difficult, again, in the Western societies to, to associate Islam with a nonviolent civil disobedience. Uh, and again, if you think of the context of the Nur community, uh, it is a context that there is religious persecution, there is no religious freedom, but the response is actually a nonviolent response. Because response, because Nursi offers Islamic theology, dealing with Islamic questions, as a form of engaging with this question as a form of jihad. Uh, all right. So the other thing is um, the interesting now, um, we should not come to the conclusion that actually this, you know, gathering in a house uh, in order to, uh, you know, to foster your spirituality, to be a better Muslim is not uniquely a new thing. Actually, we have many examples in the history of Islam uh, or, you know, in the, in the Quranic and Hadith context. We remember, again, in one of the presentations, um, the story of Moses was mentioned, right? There is a verse in the Quran, um, you know, وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ, uh, بيوتكم uh, قِبْلَةً, right? Uh, so what does it mean, turn your houses into, um, uh, turn, turn your houses into a worship place? in a spiritual place, right? Um, so if you can think of their context, it is a persecution context, right? The, you know, the, the, the people of Moses, they were persecuted by, by Pharaoh, right, Pharaoh, and uh, they seek refuge, they sought refuge in a house, right? And you see, uh, this is very similar to the context of, um, you know, the Nur community in Turkey. Another example, um, Another ex ex example, actually, in the in the in the Quran, we have you know the story of Ashab al kaf right? Kaf, the seven sleepers, uh, and actually, it is interesting in the new in the Risala, this story is mentioned is mentioned that they they resonate their own experience with the story of the seven sleepers, Ashab al kaf and they seek as they seek, and there is actually. Uh, one of the letters in the in the Barla in the, uh, in one of the letters, Kuchuk um, Ali, uh, he refers to the, the same case that as the seven sleepers they sought refuge in the cave. Likewise, I am seeking refuge in the Risale Nur, and the, you know the gatherings. Uh, we have also um, the example of actually Moriscos. It's a very interesting Moriscos in Spain, as you know. Uh, during the Inquisition, they were persecuted. They were forced to, you know, to give up their religion. And actually, in this case of uh, uh, persecution, when there was no religious freedom, they again houses became their refuge, like in the in the case of Nur, Nur community. So, lots of I mean similarities. This is not kind of um, so. And we have, of course, Darul Arkam, right? During the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, then again, when there is lots of pressure from the Meccan community, right, from the non-believers, again, what is the refuge? Is Darul Arkham. It is a house, basically, uh, and we see a similar context in the Nur community as well. When there is no religious freedom, when you don't have institutions, then the houses become a refuge. So finally, just to conclude, I would say also uh, the Dar um and again, this might be provoking. Um, is in a way, the gathering in the, in the Dersana is in a way um, is a form of accommodating Islam in a secular environment. So it, is, it has been a painful experience. Really, what is the best way to, I mean, can a Muslim live as a believer 
as a pious person in a secular environment. Apparently, from the nurses, from nurses' perspective, yes, it is possible, and actually, the gatherings in the darsanas can become an important means. Thank you for your attention.